Goff and Mayfield is a closer matchup than any of us would have expected before the season, as Goff was 11th in expected points added plus completion percentage over expected, and Mayfield was 12th, so there's minimal separation between the two. Also, if you don't understand that stat, I have a video that breaks it down, but as far as the quarterbacks are concerned, they're really similar stylistically as well, because they're both really kind of statues in the pocket and they really struggle under pressure. So they're going to struggle with the same types of things, which brings us to our next point, which is looking at the trenches and there Tampa is average in rushing success rate allowed. So they're going to be a fine run defense, but they're not going to be exceptional and Detroit is sixth in rushing expected points added, so they're elite in that category. So Detroit is going to be benefiting a fair amount from that in my eyes because they're going to be able to take the pressure off of Goff. It's not just going to be we have to pass every single play. They should have success rushing as well, and that's helpful too because that means Bulls will not be able to sell out to stop the pass and get in his real bag of pressure packages. He's going to have to respect the run as well, which is going to make it a lot more difficult to get pressure on Jared Goff. And it's going to be difficult to get pressure on Goff as well because Detroit ranked 8th in PFF's pass blocking grade compared to Tampa's 18th in PFF's pressure grade. So there is going to be an advantage on the offensive line portion for the Lions in both the run game and the pass game, and that should be pretty instrumental for the Lions' offense as It's just going to make things a lot easier on Jared Goff. He's not going to be dealing with the pressure on four-man rushes all the time. And he's also not going to be asked to do as much as he otherwise would because the rushing game should be effective as well. Receiving-wise for the Lions, Amon Ross St. Brown is going to have to earn it against Christian Izian, who is a solid corner. And if Sam Laporta plays... He's going to have a hard time against Levante David as well because David is just a premier coverage linebacker. It wasn't too long ago that David shut down Travis Kelsey in the Super Bowl, and David may have slowed down a little bit in the meantime as he's aged, but he's still in that same type of category for being just a premier coverage linebacker. So passing is not going to be super easy for the Lions, and that's especially if Sam Laporta doesn't play, because if David is going to be able to shut down Laporta for the most part, he's going to be able to shut down the backup, which I don't even remember who Detroit's backup line or tight end is. So that's not really a good sign for Detroit. And that's an area they really like to attack, as well because it's a smooth passing game for Goff where he can just kind of get those shallow attacking routes with Amon Ross St. Brown and Laporta, and they can extend it from there with the run-after-catch abilities. If they don't have that, that's really going to be difficult to consistently pass especially against this pressuring defense that you might have to take check down after check down for. But what benefits them a little bit is the fact that they have good receiving backs, particularly Jameer Gibbs is going to be the person to watch. David Montgomery is more of a pass blocking option than he is a receiver but he can do some receiving as well. He's, I would say, a little bit below average, but not egregiously bad in that department. They'll be able to set up some screens to Montgomery as well because, again, if the Bucks are bringing pressure, a good way to beat the pressure is to do a screen. 
and Montgomery is more than capable of catching a short pass and making it into something longer as he can drag two or three guys with him for the duration of the play. Things should be a bit easier for the Bucks defenders too, because after Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta, the weapons for the Lions are question marks at best. They won't be having Khalif Raymond play, which he's been a solid contributor for them. He hasn't played the most for them, but he's been productive when he has played. And really from there, it's just Josh Reynolds and Jamison Williams. Josh Reynolds is a solid number two option. I think he's more of an ideal number three, though. And Jamison Williams has all the potential in the world, but so far he has not showcased it in the NFL. So I have faith that even though the Buccaneers defense coverage-wise is average after Izian and David, I think they'll be able to shut down the remaining threats for the Lions after Jameer Gibbs, who may be a little bit of a thorn in the side of the Bucs because they don't really have a good coverage option beyond Levante David in the linebacker department. Shifting to the other side of the ball, things should be a lot easier for the Bucks as the Lions don't have a reliable outside corner, and that's just a recipe for disaster as Mike Evans and Chris Godwin is still a really high-end receiving duo. I would say it's right in that top 10 type of conversation for receiving duos. So the receivers they want to target for Tampa should have favorable matchups all game, which is really less than ideal for Detroit because Cam Sutton is all right, but he's more natural playing in the slot position where he's been better throughout his career. But Brian Branch is also a slot corner. So it's less than ideal for the matchup for the Lions defensively. And offensive line-wise, Tampa's pass blocking is about average because PFF grades them as elite, but then ESPN's pass block win rate has them as a poor group. So I think the truth is they're somewhere in between those metrics and they're about average. Detroit's um, pressure rate our pressure grade, according to PFF, is about average too. But Aiden o- Hutchinson is just liable to blow up any game plan as an edge defender. And Ali McNeil on the interior can wreck any protection as well. So they do have guys that you're really going to have to pay attention to. McNeil is particularly relevant because the Bucks' interior offensive line is worse than their tackles are. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, Mayfield really handles pressure poorly, especially when it comes to the interior, because he just doesn't have the speed to kind of escape the pocket. So it's really going to be interesting to see if McNeil will be able to blow up this game or not, because he has the capacity to. He is an elite defensive tackle. He's, I'd say, one of the five the 10 best defensive tackles in the league, even if we don't talk about him very much. So he is a premier player and the Bucks offensive line again is just really not suited to protect Mayfield from him in the interior, even if they are a solid group overall. More so than the pressure the defensive line will get for the Lions though, the bigger issue for the Bucks offensive line is going to be how they stack up in the run game because Tampa has really struggled to run the ball. They are 27th in rushing expected points added, and they're facing a Detroit team that's elite in that defense as their eighth in rushing success rate allowed. So they don't let you consistently run on them. And Tampa is not really having success against just about anybody, so it's good on bad. And I think Detroit is really going to have an edge in that regard, which will really be a pretty big factor because Detroit is going to be able to run the ball just fine on Tampa, in my opinion. And the inverse is just not going to be true. Tampa is not going to have any success rushing on Detroit. 
So I think in the end, the edge goes to Detroit. The Lions just are going to be able to do things more easily. But I think this is going to be closer than expected, or at least maybe you might initially expect, because Mike Evans and Chris Godwin will really be a headache for Detroit to defend. And pass protection-wise, Tampa should be able to protect Mayfield well enough for him to attack the openings that those two receivers will get, because they're going to be getting open pretty quickly. If Bulls devises or devises some blitzes too that'll be effective against Goff, that could really make him uncomfortable, but Goff has handled the blitz well this year. It's more so just natural pressure that really gets to him. So what separates the Lions for me is just the fact that they won't have to put the game all on Goff, whereas for the most part, it's going to be Baker Mayfield succeeds and the Bucks do, or Baker Mayfield struggles and the Bucks are going to struggle too. They just won't be having any rushing success, and that's really going to be problematic because Mayfield has been good in stretches this season, but it's really hard to trust him in a playoff game, especially on the road, and especially when the other team can bring pressure against him and put up points that'll make him have to match those scoring drives, which is just something I don't really want to bank on. So I think the Lions win, but I think it's going to be a close game. I really wouldn't feel safe picking the Lions against the spread because I do think the Bucks will be able to keep this close for the most part. And yeah, those are my opinions on the game. Be sure to let me know what yours are and also be sure to like and subscribe for more content.